Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson we are going to learn about IELTS speaking test parts 2 and 3. The topic of our cue card is advertisement. Advertisement. In this lesson we are going to look at some part 2 and part 3 questions. We are also going to look at some rounding of questions at the end of part two. I am going to recommend that as you listen to this video, you make some notes on each of the questions. By doing that, you will also be training yourself for the listening test. Now, let us begin with the part two questions. The question is, describe an advertisement that you like. You should say A, what type of advertisement it is, B, what product it advertises, C, where you first saw it, and D, explain why you like it. Let us begin with A, what type of advertisement it is. Remember, an advertisement is also called an ad or an advert. So if the examiner uses ad or advert, then it means exactly the same thing. And most of the times when we are speaking, we tend to use advert or ad. So, A what type of advertisement it is the key word here is what now you can answer this question by saying an advert that i really like has to be a television commercial about tele2 internet network An advert that I really like has to be a television commercial about Tele2 Internet Network. An advert that I really like has to be a television commercial about Tele2 Internet Network. Let's move on to be what product it advertises what product it advertises so in this question the examiner wants to know the advert that you just identified what product does it advertise now you can answer this question by saying it advertises unlimited internet connection everywhere for a very low price. It advertises unlimited internet connection everywhere for a very low price. It advertises unlimited internet connection everywhere for a very low price. Let's move on to C where you first saw it. In this question, the examiner wants to know where did you first see the advert that you have just identified? Where did you see it first? Now you can answer this question by saying, I first saw this advert when I was watching my favorite series, Friends on Television. I first saw this advert during a television commercial when I was watching my favorite series, Friends on Television. I first saw this advert during a television commercial when I was watching my favorite series, Friends on Television. Let's move on to D. Explain why you like it. In this question, the examiner wants to know why you like that particular advert. Now you can answer this question by saying, I really like this advert 
because it has a very happy and cheerful atmosphere. They use a very catchy slogan and theme song. Also, I admire the dancing skills of the actors in the advert. So I find this advert pretty entertaining. I really enjoy this advert because it has a very happy and cheerful atmosphere. This is because they use a very catchy slogan and theme song. Also, I admire the dancing skills of the actors in the advert. So, I find this advert pretty entertaining. I really enjoy this advert because it has a very happy and cheerful atmosphere. This is because they use a very catchy slogan and theme song. Also, I admire the dancing skills of the actors in the commercial. So, I find this advert pretty entertaining. Let's move on to the rounding of questions. Where do we usually see adverts? Question one, where do we usually see adverts? So in this question, the examiner wants to know where you can find adverts. Now you can answer this question by saying, we are bombarded with all types of adverts, not only on television during commercial TV breaks, for instance, but also in newspapers, magazines, billboards, websites, and on social media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We are bombarded with all types of adverts, not only on television, during TV commercials, but also in newspapers, magazines, billboards, websites, and on social media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We are bombarded with all types of adverts, not only on television during commercial TV breaks, for instance, but also in newspapers, magazines, billboards, websites, and on social media platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Let's move on to number two. Have you ever bought a product after watching an advert? In this question, the examiner wants to know if you have ever watched an advert and after that you bought the product. Now you can answer this question by saying, yes, it happens pretty often. Yesterday evening, I ordered a pair of Levi jeans after watching an advert online and the week before, I did purchase an hairdryer. Yes, it happens pretty often actually. Just yesterday evening, I ordered a pair of Levi jeans after watching an advert online and the week before, I did purchase a hairdryer. Yes, it happens pretty often actually. Just yesterday evening, I ordered a pair of Levi jeans after watching an advert online and the week before, I did purchase an hairdryer. Now let's move on to the part three questions. Question A, what do you think makes an advert e effective? What do you think makes an advert effective. In this question, the examiner wants to know, in your opinion, what sort of things make an advert effective? 
Now you can answer this question by saying, for an advert to be effective, I think that it must be very clear and direct. It should also be entertaining by containing a catchy slogan or theme song. Furthermore, it does also need to be short, original and persuasive. And finally, it should also contain clear images or actors. For an advert to be effective, I think that it must be very clear and direct. Secondly, it should be entertaining by containing a theme song or a catchy slogan. Furthermore, it does also need to be short, original, and persuasive. And finally, it should be or it should contain clear images and actors. For an advert to be effective, I think that it must be very clear and direct. It should also be entertaining by containing a theme song or a catchy slogan. Furthermore, it does need to be short, original and persuasive. And finally, it should contain clear images or actors. Let's move on to B. Do you think adverts are bad for children? In this question, the examiner wants to know, in your opinion, do you think that adverts are bad for children? Now, you can answer this question by saying, it depends. Adverts can be bad for children if they contain swear words, violence, nudity, and the marketing of junk foods and unhealthy beverages. On the other hand, however, adverts with the appropriate content can be a good source of information and entertainment for children. It depends. Adverts can be bad for children if they contain swear words, violence, nudity and the marketing of junk foods and unhealthy beverages. On the other hand, adverts with the appropriate content can be a good source of information and entertainment for children. It depends. Adverts can be bad for children if they contain swear words, violence, nudity, and the marketing of junk foods and unhealthy beverages. On the other hand, adverts with the appropriate content can be a good source of information and entertainment for children. Let's move on to C. What do you think is the purpose of advertisements? What do you think is the purpose of advertisements? Now you can answer this question by saying, advertisements have one ultimate goal, to persuade us to purchase a certain product. For this reason, they are a marketing strategy to create awareness about certain brands and products. Advertisements have one ultimate goal, and that is to persuade us to purchase a certain product. For this reason, they are a marketing strategy to create awareness about certain brands and products. Advertisements have one ultimate goal, and that is to persuade us to purchase a certain product. For this reason, they are a marketing strategy to create awareness about certain brands and products. Now, 
let's move on to the next question and that is D. What kind of advertisements do you like the most? In this question, the examiner wants to know your personal opinion. What sort of adverts do you actually like the most? Now you can answer this question by saying, my favorite advertisements are the ones that are entertaining to watch by having a theme song or a catchy slogan, but also they must feature a product that I'm interested in. Furthermore, the advert has to be short and direct and finally it should be able to relate to my personal tastes. Generally, I prefer video commercials or ads to static adverts in magazines or newspapers. My favorite advertisements are the ones that are entertaining because they contain a song or a theme song. They must also feature a product that I'm interested in. Furthermore, the advert has to be short and direct. And finally, I must say I prefer video commercial or ads to static adverts in magazines or newspapers. My favorite advertisements are the ones that are entertaining to watch because they contain a song or a theme song. They must also feature a product that I'm interested in. Furthermore, the advert has to be short and direct. I should also be able to relate to the content of the advert. And finally, I must say that I prefer video commercials or ads to static adverts in magazines or newspapers. Now let's look at the last question and that is what makes an advert inappropriate? In this question, the examiner wants to know, in your opinion, what sort of adverts would you say are not appropriate? What makes an advert inappropriate? What makes it not suitable? Now you can answer this question by saying, an advert can be inappropriate if it does, if it does contain violence, nudity, and vulgar language. Moreover, I would regard adverts that lack authenticity and believability or contain false and misleading information as unsuitable or unfitting. An advert can be inappropriate if it does contain violence, nudity, and vulgar language. Moreover, I would regard adverts that lack authenticity and believability or those that contain false information as unsuitable or unfitting. An advert can be inappropriate if it does contain violence, nudity and vulgar language. Moreover, I would regard adverts that lack authenticity and believability or those that contain false and misleading information as unsuitable or unfitting. An advert can be inappropriate if it does contain violence, nudity and vulgar language. Moreover, I would regard adverts that lack authenticity and believability or the ones that contain false and misleading information as unsuitable or unfitting. 
Now this brings me to the end of this lesson and before I sign off I would like to give you a few tips to ensure that you pass your IELTS speaking test. Tip number one, ensure that you use the correct vo vocabulary for the topic that you're talking about. Tip number two, ensure that you use a variety of sentence structures in your answers. Use simple, compound and complex sentences. Tip number three, you're expected to speak fluently. Now, how you can do that is by ensuring that, for example, you listen to this video, make notes, which will really help with your uh, listening skills as well. But once you have made the notes, then read the answers aloud. Read them aloud. Repeat them. That will loosen your tongue and improve your fluency because you will also practice how to pronounce the different words and different sounds in English. And the next tip, ensure that you use the correct intonation when you're speaking. Raise and lower your voice depending on what you want to emphasize. And the last tip, which is the most important, which is really the one that determines what band you get, is be very careful on the tenses that you're using when you're giving your answers. You're not supposed to be speaking broken English. You must have what we call subject verb agreement, for example. But also you should be able to speak in the correct tense. Now, if you have a few problems with that, feel free to have a look at my playlist. I have a video in the playlist under grammar. Uh, you can look at all the different tenses that we have in English. But also, I would encourage you, for example, to have a look at my playlist on uh, not just the tenses, but also there is a, a, a very, very helpful video on subject verb agreement okay now i'm going to sign off and before i go have you subscribed to the channel if you haven't please subscribe to the channel for those who have subscribed thank you very much for your support and if you haven't subscribed come on give something back i'm giving you something very useful that is education so kindly give me something back by just subscribing to the channel and giving this video a thumbs up it's just a simple act of kindness okay now thank you very much if you have just subscribed and do not forget to share this video with all the people that you think may need it on all your social media platforms I appreciate that very much. Now, bye-bye and see you in our next lesson.